Welcome back, it's Professor Hendricks, and today I'd like to talk about FASTQ files. Now, FASTQ files are pretty standard file format, so every time you do any sort of high throughput sequencing, Illumina sequencing, most of the time you get the file back as a FASTQ file. Now, I have a, an example right here, so on my directory reads.fastq, this is actually just a sampling of a FASTQ file from Drosophila heat shock factor. And so what I can see here is there's actually four lines per record in this file. So you have the ID right here, which is indicated by this at symbol. And so I guess I'll start with this one right here. Um, and then you have the sequence itself. And then you have, in this case, a plus sign. So if we look at this record in isolation, what we see right here is something like this. So we have the at symbol, and this at symbol is analogous to greater than sign in FASTA files. And it sort of indicates the beginning of a new record. And then you have this unique identifier for that read. A lot of times this identifier encodes information about the spot on the plate that where the um, actual cluster of, of uh, fragments were that, that resulted in that read. And then you have the, um, the sequence of DNA itself and followed by the replicate of the same ID. And in this other example that I have here, you can see that that's just a plus sign. So it starts with a plus sign. The duplicated ID starts with a plus sign, but the plus sign is really all you need. And you can imagine that that probably reduces a little bit of file space if you don't include the ID again. And then the fourth line of the file is probably the most mysterious, and that is the quality score line. Now, the quality score um, string or quality string encodes information about the probability of an error in each of these um, nucleotides of that read. So it gives us a sense of how confident the machine was in classifying that particular nucleotide as an adenine or guanine or, or whatever. So let's take a, a closer look into these, these characters. So these are just basically ASCII characters. And the way that it's encoded is the following. The, the ASCII characters encode a number. And I'll come back to how that number is actually encoded in the character. But first, this equation right here describes the relationship between these FRED scores, which are the, the quality scores encoded in those characters. And it's defined as minus 10 times the log base 10 of the probability of an error. So in other words, it's the probability that the base call decision was, at, was an error. Some sort of a classification scheme where they've calibrated the probabilities of error and they are able to estimate it based on the signals that they're decomposing in the sequencing machine. Um, but then it's log base 10. So and, and then multiplied by a factor of 10. So in other words, if the probability of an error was, say, 1%, so that would be 0 0.01 or 10 to the minus 2, the log base 10 of 10 to the minus 2 is minus 2 times the minus 10 gives you 20. So t a FRED score of 20 is about, uh, you know, 1% error. A FRED score of 30 is a 1 in 1,000 error. And let's go back to the character itself and how that FRED score is encoded in the character. So the way the, the single character codes encode the FRED score is actually related to this ASCII table right here. So every character in an in ordinary uh, ASCII system has 256 possibilities, and there's a number associated with each character, you know, called the, you know, the decimal representation of that number. And so, if, for example, if we go through here, there's a lot of non-printable characters. You have things like backspace, new line, tab, um, you have a bell sound, so this was like back pre, you know, Spotify and YouTube and everything, so the best computers could do was just make a bell sound. And then you have escape, um, cancel, so all these are non-printable characters. And the first printable character up here is the exclamation point, also known as the bang, and that has a number 33. So if we start with those ASCII characters, we need to basically just convert it to this number, but that's not all. The ORD function right here is, is exactly what maps that character to its ASCII number. Um, but then we have to subtract 33 because remember the first printable character was number 33. So we define that as a FRED score of zero and define the other characters as follows. So let's see how we might do this in a particular file. So if I, if I take a look at this file right here, and if I don't know, if I just take out this H right here, and I want to know what is the FRED score that corresponds to an H. So I'll just enter the Python terminal. So basically what I would do is I would say, what is ORD of H? So I have to put it in quotes because it's a character as opposed to Python thinking it's the variable H. And, and if I subtract 33, I get 39. So an H corresponds to a FRED score of 39. If you want to know a ballpark of what probability that is, it's 10 to the minus four, 
I can show you why that is. So if you would just do um, 10, so we have to basically invert the equation. So we would use um, double asterisk to indicate exponentiation, and then we could put 39 divided by 10, and we don't forget that minus sign. And so it's basically 10 to the negative 3.9, but it converts to something pretty darn close to 10 to the negative 4. So with that, I'll close this discussion on FASTQ files and how they're defined. And next time, I'll talk about how to read them with uh, the Seek I.O. module.